Israeli forces have continued their push deep into the Gaza Strip, engaging Hamas terrorists in running gun battles while bulldozing and destroying the network of tunnels from which Hamas operates. They've uncovered military installations and munition plants near or even under hospitals, schools and mosques. Joining me now from the ground in Israel for an update is freelance war correspondent Chuck Holton. Chuck, welcome back to Washington Watch. Good to see you, Tony. So, Chuck, give us the latest. Uh, it sounds like it was a pretty busy day for Israeli Defense Forces. Well, it certainly has been. They've been uh, making big gains on the ground, and they are actually approaching the hospital, the only uh, operating hospital now in north northern Gaza, uh, the one that they have proof that the headquarters of uh, Hamas is underneath. And so that's going to get very, very difficult as they try to root out uh, from those tunnels uh, all of those Hamas fighters. They have found, as you said, hundreds of sites that were launch sites for missiles, and many of those sites uh, were next to schools, next to mosques, playgrounds, uh, buried in the ground of the playground. Uh, and we're starting to learn a little bit about how they are able to continue firing these rockets. Uh, because many of them were actually the rocket launchers built into buildings or built into the ground so that they didn't have to set up a rocket launcher or anything like that. They just had to uncover it with a tarp and they could set a timer and, and have those things fired. Uh, there has not been a day go by since October 7th when we have not had uh, rockets firing out of Gaza. Today was no exception. We had over 10 rocket launches out of Gaza today. And uh, so far, the uh, uh, Hamas terrorists have fired 9,500 rockets between them and Hezbollah uh, since October 7. Now, they say that about 12 percent of those rockets have fallen short. And so that all but guarantees that Hamas has killed uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of its own people uh, with those rocket launches. Now, because the, uh, many of those are homemade rockets and they malfunction. But some of those rockets are long-range rockets, and they're rockets that are given to them or sold to them by countries like North Korea, Iran. And uh, those are the ones that are most concerning because they can strike much deeper into Israel and can uh, pack a bigger punch. Those are the ones that the IDF has been most focused on shooting down. And over the last couple of days, we've seen the number of long-range rockets drop precipitously. So that's a very good sign. Uh, I don't think, though, that we'll be able to uh, claim victory in uh, in any sense in Gaza until they go at least a day with no rocket launches whatsoever. And uh, let's hope that that happens soon. So video from both the IDF and Hamas show the urban fighting in Gaza City, and it, it, it resembles in many ways the battles to retake uh, Fallujah in, in Iraq mm -hmm. almost 20 years ago. Uh, how intense ha has the, ba the fighting that you've seen been? I think that you could more likely equate it with the battle for Ramadi, uh, because in the battle for Ramadi, the Marine Corps put the word out beforehand and told people they were going to take the city and that anybody that was left in the city after a certain date would be considered a combatant. Uh, that's the only other uh, time that I know of when an army has given the word beforehand what they were going to do in order to give people a chance to leave, because that also gives the benefit to the enemy so that they can further prepare and they can also get their people out or let's in this case here in Gaza get some of the hostages out perhaps it's a good chance that many of those hostages are now no longer in the northern part of Gaza they're they're either in southern Gaza or have even been taken out of Gaza altogether to someplace like Iran um, so we don't know that for sure we have only seen very little in the way of proof of life of any of those hostages. And uh, as you know, only one of them so far has been rescued by the IDF. And that, that's a major concern for uh, the IDF right now. And so they're having to go very slowly and methodically through the outskirts of Gaza and into Gaza City, not only because there are just so many angles from which you can be shot in an urban environment, but specifically because they're trying very hard to um, kill the enemy without killing people who don't need to be killed, and that includes civilians. They actually have special units that are going in on the ground with the IDF to uh, specifically grab and rescue 
uh, Palestinian civilians, women and children, that they come upon as they're fighting their way through and spirit them out of the combat zone to the south. As you know, they've also opened up uh, at least one humanitarian corridor. Now they're saying a second one will be opened up uh, as of today that will allow people to flee south. Again, that is a two-edged sword. It, it helps with the information war, but it also gives Hamas on the ground a chance to get its fighters, wounded or not, out of the combat zone and maybe even smuggle some of the hostages out as well. But th this really does show the contrast between Israel and Hamas when they're notifying them in advance that they're coming into the city and anyone there is going to be considered a combatant after a certain time period. And then you contrast that with what they're uncovering there in Gaza City, where schools, hospitals, mosques are being used as cover for military operations. I mean, they don't care anything about the civilians. Well, that's exactly what the leadership of Hamas has been saying all along. And they have said that we are a nation of martyrs. And so we don't have any problem martyring our people for this cause. Now, normally, when, when a, a group or a country wants to make heroes out of its people, they're talking about their fighters. They're talking about their heroes are the warriors that go and stand between the enemy and their women and children. In this case, though, Hamas is making the women and children the martyrs, and that, that is unprecedented in uh, modern war, for sure. Uh, and so for them to say that they love uh, death as much as we love life, it's kind of hypocritical in a way because the leadership of Hamas actually isn't in Gaza. They're right. in Qatar, which brings up a whole other uh, question because the United States calls Qatar a trusted ally in the region, but Qatar gives hundreds of millions of dollars to Hamas and hosts the Hamas leadership in their country. And oh, by the way, we have a military base there with 8,000 troops in it. It's just kind of hard to wrap your, your head around when you start to think about it. And it's interesting. We don't hear much from the international community uh, condemning Hamas for pushing civilians to the forefront of the battle, whether they want to or not. And I mean, it, it's just, it, it is quite amazing the duplicity, the hypocrisy that we see. Uh, Chuck, we're almost out of time. The, the, the White House today announcing that uh, Israel was going to have these uh, four-hour pauses each day to allow for humanitarian relief. But then uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's office dismissed that. So what do we know? Is that going to be taking place each day or not? Well, it's being reported that it's uh, supposed to happen. And uh, I think the real problem with that is that it is a, it's a big publicity coup for Hamas because Hamas's objective here is legitimacy. And so the, by, by negotiating with these terrorists, they are being given legitimacy. And this is all coming under heavy, heavy pressure from the United States. Now, also, I would say, Every time there has been any kind of lull in the fighting since it began uh, after October 7th, Hamas has used that time to fire more rockets into Israel. And so I will be watching very closely to see if that happens, with, if they actually do these humanitarian pauses, if they have rockets come flying out of Israel, I mean, out of uh, Gaza into Israel during those supposedly ceasefires. Uh, but again, all this does is it... it takes the pressure off Hamas. And taking the pressure off Hamas is doing exactly what uh, President Reagan, back when I was a young man, uh, said that we should never do, and that's negotiate with terrorists. Right, right. absolutely. Uh, Chuck Holton, thanks so much for uh, joining us. We continue to pray for your safety, so please uh, stay safe. We Thank look you. forward to talking to you again real soon.